Welcome back. So we've gone ahead and done a little bit of the project. We did need to use a paintbrush. So in between these places, it's a little bit hard to get our, our rag. And so what we've had to do is use that paintbrush to get in those little corners. And I'm going to show you the last side that we have to do. See how it's still white in there? You see the white wood? So what we got to do is get a little bit of the stain. And it's okay if it flops around a little bit because we can use it on the other side. You want to make sure and really soak the wood so it can get the most rich, full stain color. Sometimes you got to come at it from a few different angles. As it soaks in, you can go back with the brush a little bit and kind of spread it around a little bit, rub it in the same way you would with the rag. Okay, we've got that from one side, so we're going to rub off the excess here. Now we can look from the inside, put it this way so you can see it. And we also got to get all these little corners in here because the rag won't go there. And these little side pieces. And a little bit away from the corner so we can reach. Okay, then we can go back to our rag. We're just rubbing that nice rich color right into the wood grain. Now it's important to know that if there's been glue, which these have been glued, the glue will keep the stain from sticking super well. So on those spots, sometimes we want to just add a little extra stain and let it soak in a little more. You want to look for any little white spots that you missed. Okay. Now we're going to do the inside. You want to rub with the wood grain.
nice firm pressure pushing on the rat pushes that stain into the wood without getting too much wasted stain because we hope to make a lot of accessories for Toby's kitchen with this same bottle of stain, the same can. So you can see where the glue keeps it from really adhering, but that's okay if we need to. I've got a trick for that. We can go back with a Sharpie marker and just sort of blacken them up. And then that makes them not catch the eye. Mama will like that, you'll see. Okay, now we're gonna do the bottom and then we're done and we can let it sit to dry. Still interested? Projects take time. You can't just rush through them. You can, but that's just to get something done. When you're really working on a crafts project, you want to take your time and do it right. That also keeps you from having to redo things, which is very important. Quality versus quantity. Sometimes you want to just get more done because it doesn't really matter. It's not super important. And other times you really want to do a nice job. I want to do a really nice job for Toby, which is why we brought these to Bubby's workshop. So they don't take up any of Mama's time with Bubby. And she can continue to give, Mom, give uh, Bubby projects. Okay, looks like we've got it all covered. We've got our excess wiped off. And now we just let our tray dry. It should dry for a good 24 hours. We'll be able to move it sooner than that so we can take it in tonight and let it dry in the shop rather than outside. But it should be pretty good to go. Now we can't stop yet. We have to do our cleanup. The rag is fine. This is going to be the stain rag for this color. We want to make sure we've sort of cleaned out the lip and we put the can, the lid back on the can. We might even want to clean it a little bit like this with our with our stain rag. That keeps the lid from sticking next time and makes sure that we can get the lid off when we need to use our product. All right, see how clean that lid is? I don't know if you can see that. All right, then we put the lid on and we need to tamp it down. Can use anything, a stick. Okay. And then, if our gloves are really dirty, what you want to do is take it off inside out, hold it in the center of the other one, and then do the same. All clean. Thanks for watching. Bye, Toby.